Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Empowerment Prayer Room. Come on in the room. I don't know if you can share this or invite others, but if you can, please do so. Uh, we are so thankful for this new day. It is February 14th and everybody calls it Valentine's Day. But we are saying today it is a love day. And uh, we are so grateful. Thank you once again for listening. Thank you for jumping on. And um, anybody that can or would like to, uh, if you're in a, a position that you can, uh, just kind of speak on God's love and how Jesus' love has uh, touched your life, changed your life, you may be able to enter it in the comments or actually... Uh, I can invite you to actually speak so that others can hear and this recording can uh, go forth. So once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. We're excited. We're excited because of God's goodness, His grace, His mercy, His love and kindness is better than life. And so we're thankful. And once again, we thank you for joining. We're just, our focus today is on the love of God. This, uh, that many are celebrating Valentine's Day, February 14th. But our focus is on God's love and the power of God's love. He loves us so very much. And as I uh, preached on the message yesterday about uh, God's love for love's sake and it's just resonating with me and I think it will for the remainder of my days and I keep asking Lord why do you love us so why do you love us so that you would send your only begotten son to die for us so that's our focus on today Let's talk about love. Uh, and I have several scriptures. And of course, if you would like to share, uh, uh, just let me know. And I can invite you to speak, testify. Anybody got a testimony about God's love that you can share? Uh, I don't know how you would do that on your end. God bless you. Okay, so um, we know that the first mention of God's love, uh, God's commandment to love is found in the Old Testament when Moses gave the uh, law to the children of Israel. We find it in Deuteronomy 6, chapter verse 5. We find it. He repeats it in the 10th chapter of Deuteronomy. He repeats it again in the 11th chapter, which lets us know that we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded of God's love. Uh, and then when Jesus was asked by the young ruler in the New Testament, in Matthew and Luke, the young ruler asked him, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said to him, it is to love the Lord your God with your whole heart. I'm paraphrasing. Everything that you are, every, love him with your whole heart, your mind, your strength, your soul. Just love God and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so we know that the greatest gift, the greatest commandment is love. And John, John 1 John 4 and 8 
the the uh, New Living Translation says, but anyone who does not love does not know God. Why does he say that? Why is that? He says, for God is love. There is no way that you can know God, that you can have a relationship with God. That you can love, say you love Jesus the Christ and not love people. It just don't work. It just does not. It is impossible. John says, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. And so there are like 361 uh times in the Bible that love, the, just the word love, L-O-V-E is mentioned. And we find it throughout the Word of God. And as the message ministered to us yesterday from Romans 5 and 8, but God demonstrated His own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we find the characteristics of love, divine love, God's definition of love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. These are the characteristics of love, God's love. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. My God. And so reading these scriptures about love and what God requires when it comes to love and loving Him and being in a relationship with Him, it lets us know that we have to examine ourselves. And we have to come to the understanding or agree with God's Word that I am not where I should be because I'm not loving the way you said. This thing called love, y'all. It, it is serious. It is serious. And so we have to repent. And when when we know that we're not, we don't have the right attitude toward people, and especially if people that have hurt us, we have to let it go. We have to forgive and love them in spite of. How do we know this? Because Jesus said, in Luke 6 and 33, he says, love your enemies. God, how do I love my enemies? Well, guess what? God does not give us a command that he will not empower or enable us or has already given us the ability to do. So if he says, love your enemies, we can do it. But it has to be because we love him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments so we can do it. But it get, begins with us loving him. So then we ask ourselves the question, Lord, do I really love you? And we can say that we love, but then what our actions show something else. Oh, my God. He says, love your enemies. Do good. And lend, hoping for nothing in return. Sometimes we say we love people and, and we want them to do things for us. And we do things for them, but we have expectations of them. Hmm. So love without expectation of it being returned. Because everybody does not love God the way I love God. And so be having that understanding, I do not always expect people to reciprocate the love that I give. I hope I'm making sense. Hoping for nothing in return. And he says, and your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful 
and evil. And so if we're going to call ourselves Christians, which means Christ-like, then we have to be kind and thankful even to those who are unthankful, even to those who try to hurt us, who lie on us, who talk about us, who criticize us. Hallelujah. If we are going to profess that we are followers of Jesus Christ, love, the love of Christ has to be in us to such a degree, hallelujah, that we can pray for those who despitefully misuse us. Pray for those who do not like us. Hallelujah. And just because you identify yourself as a believer, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, there will be people who don't like you, know nothing about you, but just don't like you because you identify with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can't see. I don't know if you all are saying anything. Anybody? Oh, yes. Okay. I see some comments now. I'm thanking God for showing his love through comforting me. Yes, Sister Tina. Yes. As I'm going through this illness, he reminds me that I have strength. Hallelujah. Through him to endure. Yes. Yes. God bless you. Glory to God. Anybody else that just want to share Glory to God. Hallelujah. I see my brother Larry on. He's always got a word. He's always got encouraging words. Brother Larry, if I invite you to speak, you want to share anything about God's love? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So thank you for you that are on. Reno, God bless you. Bless the day. Hey there, girl. In Kansas City. Hello, hello. Sister Sylvia, my friend. God bless you. Vicki, Shamisha, God bless you. Barbara, Ross, glory to God. Helen, thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Anybody, glory to God. You're welcome to share. If you can comment, you can do that. If you can share uh, today this uh, empowerment prayer because we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Hallelujah on this afternoon but I just wanted to uh, share this is Valentine's Day and so many are celebrating uh, their love affairs and getting gifts I was out yesterday and and on every block on every corner they had their little uh, stand set up selling flowers and gifts and all kinds of things people are celebrating love but do they really understand what love is and what love is all about. The God kind of love. The agape love. The love that you're willing to die. Hallelujah. God loved us so much that he died for us. He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross. We deserve death because of we were enemies of God. We were sinners. Hallelujah. Born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but God loved us. And we are to love him and love one another, especially in the body of Christ. We love one another. And so once again, I thank you for joining this this afternoon. We don't keep long. We just do 30 minutes max. Hallelujah. And then we pray. I just want you to be encouraged and to know, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know your challenges. I don't know what's going on in your personal life. I know life can be challenging. We are filled with so many challenges. And in this season, there is so much loss and so much painful things that are happening in people's lives. And sometimes people have this belief that God does not love them and people do not love them. They feel unloved. So many are hurt and feeling unloved because of what they have done. But I want you to know and to share the good news that no matter what they have done, hallelujah, no matter how misbehaved, how they have sinned, God loves them. 
He loves you. He loves me. He loves everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the kind of love that he has for us. He loves you. Doesn't matter what you look like, no matter where you came from, no matter who your parents are, you are here because God wanted you here and he loves you. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And his plan for you are good to give you a hope and an expected end. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you on today. We thank you for what you have done for us. We give you praise, honor, and glory because of who you are. And you are worthy of praise. Nobody like you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nobody like you. None can compare to you. You are great and mighty and awesome and wonderful. And we thank you today for your love. We thank you today that you love us unconditionally. Doesn't matter what we have done. It does not matter what we will ever do in the future. You still love us. And we thank Thank you today. We thank you for your love and kindness. Hallelujah. Your love and kindness is better than life. You are good. You are faithful. You are worthy of our praise. We reverence you on today as we celebrate this day of love. Hallelujah. We love you. There is no greater love than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. And because of that, we can celebrate your love for us and we call you friend. You are our friend. You are a friend that's sick and closer than a brother. You are, hallelujah, and we are your friends because you gave yourself for us. You reveal yourself to us. You tell us wonderful things. You keep us. You preserve us. You protect us. Hallelujah. We are still here because you have purpose for our lives. And we thank you on today. We give you praise, honor, and glory, great and mighty God. What a privilege we have to commune with you, to fellowship with you, to talk to you, to come boldly in confidence to your throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. We dare not take it for granted. We dare not abuse and take for granted your grace and your love, your loving kindness. You are faithful. We bless you, Lord. I thank you today for every listener in the Empowerment Prayer Room on today. You see them. You know them. You know what they're facing. You know any challenges. You know all about them. And so, Father, I pray today that even whatever it is they're facing, that they know that you love them. So often our minds play tricks on us and because of the challenges we're facing and the difficulties that we're facing, the enemy whispers that you do not love us and they are not loved. But we cancel the plan of the enemy today and we silence the voice of the enemy today that whispers they are not loved. But I declare today, hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Ghost that they are loved and that they will embrace and receive your love for them. Glory to God. And whatever challenges or difficulties they're facing, it is to draw them closer to you so that they can experience, yes, Lord, they can experience your trust and your love that you have for them. Glory to God. Let your great mighty presence be in their midst. Hallelujah. Your tangible presence, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Cancel the plans of the enemy, every plot, every scheme, every device, every distraction that has come in their lives to draw them away from you. But we declare today, hallelujah, that they are drawn closer to you. 
I pray for their family members. I pray, Lord God, for your continued perfect protection and your provision over their families. I thank you because of the blood of Jesus that cover and prevail. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Help us. Teach us how to love like you love. Help us to walk in love as you have commanded in your word. Help us to love one another. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we see in our world, in our society, so much hatred. But we pray today, Father, in the name of Jesus, Oh, that love, that your love, hallelujah, would permeate even the atmosphere, shift hearts and minds and turn them toward you to embrace your love. Open eyes that are blinded to this, the God of this age, that have blinded the minds that will cause people to hate and to be divisive and to be dissension. Father, you have prayed for those who belong to you to be one. And so we pray for unity. Let that love abide. Let love be without dissimulation. Let love, hallelujah, return to the household of faith. That we love one another. We do not talk about one another. We do not slander one another. Hallelujah. For when we slander one another, it is a slap in your face. It is a misrepresentation of who you are, Jesus the Christ, who love. Father, help us today. Hallelujah. We come against the spirit of hatred and evil. Hallelujah. We speak against it now in the name of Jesus. Let your love abide in Jesus name we thank you for this day once again it is a day that you have made and we make a conscious decision we choose to celebrate to be glad in it because you are the one who controls the universe you cause it to stay together. Hallelujah. All things were created by you and for you. And without you, nothing that was made was made. And you hold everything together. And we trust you, Father. We trust you. We can trust you because you love us. Hallelujah. And I pray that everyone that's on today and anyone that will hear this prayer in the days and even the years to come will embrace your love. Hallelujah. Let it speak to their hearts and their minds and their spirit and receive your love. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for loving us beyond our faults. We are imperfect people, but you still love us. We have issues, but you still love us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I pray today that the same love will be shed abroad from heart to heart and breast to breast. Those that we come in contact with, may they feel the love that's in our heart that comes from you. And we can speak a word that will encourage them and empower them to let them know that they are loved. We are not judgmental. We do not look at the outward appearance. Hallelujah. And judge people and decide that they are unlovable because of what we see and because of what we know they do and have done. They are your people and you love them. Oh God. Thank you today. Thank you, Father. 
Hallelujah. I pray for a shift in understanding on this day. February 14, 2022. Hallelujah. That throughout the airway, I send this word, the love of God be released. Hallelujah. And that people who will hear and receive your love. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. Our great God. We love you and we thank you for what you have done for us. We could not do it ourselves. We love ourselves sometimes so much that ourselves that we can become our own idols. Hallelujah. But for the grace of God, we would not be who we are or have what we have. It is because of your loving kindness. We thank you today. Again, I pray for everyone that's listening. May they feel your presence and be empowered and be encouraged. And whatever they face in the coming week will know that you still love them and you care for them. And they will cast all their care upon you because you care for them. You love them. It is in the marvelous, majestic, excellent name of Jesus the Christ that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. All right, wonderful people, thank you once again so very much for sharing on this Valentine's Day, this day of love. Hmm. We bless God for you. And uh, I just wanted to add that uh, we've been going through the series, Jesus, Who Is He? And we've been going through the uh, books of the Bible uh, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh talking about who Jesus is and how he's revealed in those in those books. And so even though we uh, we focus more on love, but I do want to let you know, uh, I'm skipping ahead, in the Song of Solomon, uh, Jesus is still revealed. He is revealed because uh, he is the lover, and it is an allegory or a picture of Christ's love for the church. So uh, when we get down to that, we will have already mentioned that. You can do some research on it if you want to. But in the Song of Solomon, Jesus is revealed. And it points to him as being the one who loves. He is the lover. And uh, he, his love for the church. Uh, he is the bridegroom. So just throwing that out there. And we thank you once again for listening on today. And uh of course, you'll be blessed, you'll be encouraged, and you'll be empowered. And continue to live purposeful, powerful lives through faith, your faith in Jesus the Christ, the one who loves you so much that he died on the cross for you. And on the third day, he got up to seal the deal. Hallelujah. God is good. He's faithful. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father, even now, making intercession for 